Praise the Lord. It's so glad. I'm so glad to have you with us here today at God's Got a Plan. We know that there's so much going on in the world today and you turn on your television set, you get all of this terrible news about killings and uh, terroristic acts and things are just happening today that is just even unheard of. I can go as far as saying that it was unheard of. You know, at one time we would say it's got to get better before it gets worse. And, and if you look at it, you know, we realize that it's getting worse and worse and worse. People are short on patience today. You realize that many are agitated and very uh, stressed out, mainly because we don't know how to operate in patience. And patience is one of the fruits of the spirit. And patients need to be developed. We all must develop patients, but it's going to be hard to develop patients if you're not allowing yourself to, let's just say, come online with the Holy Spirit. Because it is the Holy Spirit who teaches us and, and, and let's just say, dwells in us. And I'm talking about you, the believer. The Holy Spirit is real. And he wants you to know that, you know, you don't have to live that old life, like that old man, that old woman, that old person that we used to be running around all angry and mad and upset, uptight and, you know, self-willed, self-motivated and, you know, so concerned, overly concerned about ourselves. But today, if we can just exercise some patience and really that's my theme for today's program, I want to talk to you today about patience. And, and, you know, and I think a good place to start right here is in Mark 12 and 30. And, and, I'm, and I want to start here because, you know, we talk about how much we love the Lord. But the Bible says, Jesus says, why do you say you love me, but you don't do what I say do? And I think it's so very important that we understand the relationship that God has brought those of us who are called saints, believers, uh, we're in a relationship with an awesome God and he loves you so much and he's given us a way out of our turmoil. He's given us a way out of our hurt, our pain and our shame. And if we're agitated and let's just say f not focused on really what we're here to do, because let me say this, you're here on assignment. You're not just haphazardly brought here at this time in your life. You're here to be a change maker. You're here to bring about change in your community, in your home, in the lives of your children, on your job, in your church. You are here to make a difference. I'm going to say it again. You are here to make a difference. And it is so very important that you come to understand that patience is a key element in reference to making that happen. But, you know, and to say that I'm patient, but... Let's look at the relationship that we should have with God. Let me start right there. Mark 12, no, Mark 13, Mark 12 in the 30th verse says this. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and all your mind and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. And I, I wanted to start with this because I realized that it, everything starts with God. You know, apart from God, we can do nothing, but with him, all things are possible. And many of us really need to take a real honest look at ourselves today because many of us are doing our own thing. And you're trying to make life work. You're trying to bring things into fruition. You're trying to manifest things in your life and bring things forth. But you're not doing what you need to do in reference to acknowledging God. And let's just say making him Lord overall in your life. In other words, he has to be sitting high in your heart, on your heart, in your heart. 
He has to be the center, most important thing in your life. And when you can, you know, and you might be saying, why? Why, why do God have to be the most important thing? Because he's given us this life. You know, he's given you this life. And as I said earlier, apart from him, we can do nothing. But the Bible goes on to say, but with him, all things are possible. And many of you, I'm sure, are falling short. I don't know where you're at in life, but God knows. And if you're watching this program today, it's for a reason. So I would, I would let's just say, I would beckon you to please stay with us today and don't turn that dial. Don't hit that mouse on your computer. Sit still for, a ne for the next 25 minutes or so. I guarantee you'll hear something that will bless you. Because Lord knows if you don't need patience right now at the viewing of this program, I can guarantee you're going to need patience soon. If not today, tomorrow, next week, it's, you're going to need patience. And, you know, we get short-tempered standing in a line, you know, at the supermarket. I'm, I mean, why is this person taking so long? And, and I just don't want to stand on this line. And then, you know, you, you go into an express line. And why did this person come up with, with one item more than, than the recommended uh, 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 choices? They say if you have more than 12 items, you can't come on the express line. And now and I'm getting agitated. I'm short-tempered. And then now and I might even take it out on the cashier, the person at the register, because I should have been out of here already. Why? Because we don't know how to exercise patience. You know, the Bible says, keep your mind stayed on him and he will keep you in perfect peace. And that's what we have to do sometimes is realize that if we can just Keep our minds stayed on him. If we can think about those things that are good, Paul talked about, think about those things that are good and of a good report. Those things that would keep you in the positive frame of mind because we want to be demonstrating a character in a lifestyle that would promote the kingdom, that will prove me to be what I say I am because many of us talk the talk, but the question today is, are you walking the walk? And in order to walk the walk, I'm telling you now, you're going to need patience. You're going to need patience. So when you find yourself being pressed on every side, and I mean the enemy knows how to come. And then again, I, I say the enemy, but there are times when we can make bad choices and decisions over our life that will cause us to end up at a pretty difficult place or tight place or a place that's uncomfortable. But when you can look to the hills, and I'm talking about look to the Lord, uh, stop complaining, stop complaining, stop complaining. Understand when you can get into the habit of going to the throne, when you can get in prayer, get to that, 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 that altar of prayer and begin to lift up the word, begin to lift up your problem to the Lord. I'm here to tell you, he'll make it right for you, saints. He will make it right for you, saints. Why? Because he wants you to bless. He wants you to be blessed. You know, uh, uh, Paul uh, in Galatians 5 and 22, he gave us a prescription. And when I say a prescription, I'm talking about nine traits of uh, Christian character. I'm talking about that virtue that all of us who walk the walk, well, I should say talk the talk, should be walking. In other words, we should be demonstrating these fruits of the spirit. And it just so happened. Matter of fact, I believe in the King James, it says long suffering. But in the in, in the ES, in the English Standard Version, it says patience. And that's what I really want to talk to you. Galatians 522 says this. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace and patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control against such there is no law and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified their flesh with the passions and desires and the 25th verse says if we live by the spirit let us also walk by the spirit father we just thank you for this day I thank you Lord for my viewer Lord God today I thank you for these amazing people who thought in that robbery to join you on the line today. I pray, Father, that you would speak a on-time word, in season. I pray that you will meet us where we're at, at this present time, the viewing of this program. 
And then, Lord, give us the wisdom that's needed, Lord, that we can grow in grace and that we can know your presence is real. I thank you, Father, in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. As it says here, the fruit of the spirit is love. That first fruit being love, love, joy, peace, patience. See, you have to look at the the uh, uh, the, the 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 roll call there, the 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 let's just say the outline of what Paul is saying. That foundation is love. Everything is going to spring forth from love. And then from love, what you're going to have joy. Oh, this joy I have. The world didn't give it and the world shouldn't be allowed to take it away. And then following the joy comes peace. See, when you are joyful and happy, you have peace. There's peace in the home, peace in my relationships. And I can say that things are well, things are good. But and then the next thing following peace is is patience, long suffering, as the King James says. In other words, there are going to be times when you're going to have to suffer long with some people. You know, everybody that you know is not going to do what you might want them to do. But we as Christians have to be able to maintain that Christ-like character that will promote this glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. In other words, I have to make it real. I make it real by not just talking the talk, but by walking the walk. And when you're able to look past the faults, the needs of others and understand that everybody might not be where you're at. Matter of fact, everybody don't want to celebrate Jesus the way you might want to celebrate Jesus. People might look at you as a holy roller or whatever the case may be. But I'm here to tell you today, truly, you are somebody because God didn't make no jump when he made you and he put in you patience. You have the seed of patience in you. When you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, he, there was a seed deposited in you called patience, the code name patience. And let me put it like this. Now that patience need to be developed. And with the help of the Holy Spirit now, you're going to be able to, let's just say, Live out. I'm not going to say act out because I could say the whole world's a stage and everybody's playing a part. And then I can ask you today, are you playing the right part? Are you playing the right part? See, but if you're not operating in patience, nine times out of ten, you're playing the wrong part. Mainly because you might not know and understand your purpose. You, maybe you're reading from the wrong script. Are you hearing me? So it's so very important that we understand that patience is a key element to promotion, to advancement, to peace, to joy, to be able to operate in love. Oh, there's so much is, is going to let's just say it's going to be uh, uh, hinged or is going to manifest mainly because of the mere fact you're operating in patience. You know, I, 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 patience means to what? To forbear. So when you're patient, you're going to forbear with others. God wants you to be able to see the importance of forbearing. And, and that talks about when I talked about the mere fact that everybody's not going to do what you want them to do. So there's going to be times when you're just going to. Have, matter of fact, the Bible says that we're to be patient with those who oppose themselves. Everybody, like I said, people are not going to do what you want them to do when you might want them to do it. Everybody don't get the message. Everybody don't want the message. So we have to learn to be patient with those who oppose themselves. Number one, you got to keep them in prayer and hope that they can get the message. And eventually, you know, the message is available to all. You know, there's messages out here. This message of peace and love. I was looking at Webster's Dictionary and Webster's Dictionary says it's the quality of being patient as the bearing of provocation, annoyance, misfortune or pain without complaint or loss of temper or irritation. And are you hearing me? I can't allow these things to irritate me. You know, if you remember, Scripture also reminds us to cast all of our cares upon the Lord. The Lord wants you to cast all of your cares upon him. Because he realized now, in order for you to do what he's called you to do, you're going to have to be able to let go of your problem. 
See, too many of us are carrying that problem, holding on to that problem, don't want to let it go, have that problem all up in our face, and I really can't look past the problem, or maybe I should say see past the problem, so I can move into that place where I'm able to live out this life, being that man, that woman God called you to be. Oh, I'm here to tell you, my brothers and sisters, you're a powerful individual. You are a powerful sister. Think about the mere fact that, you know, you had to raise a couple of kids all by yourself. You know why? Because your husband or your man might have, you know, got up and gone somewhere else or whatever. And now you're left home doing what a mother's going to do. And, you know, you're committed to raising your family and you're going to need a whole lot of patience with them kids. Why? Because that's life. We call that life. And I can truly say that life is what you make it. And if you don't incorporate patience in your life, you know, hey, things are not going to unfold. Things are not going to happen, manifest. Things are not going to be birthed as soon as you might want. Hey, even to bring life onto the planet is going to take nine months. You might have a little early birth or whatever the case may be, but it's not going to happen overnight. You put some seed in the ground and you put some dirt over that seed and you begin to water it. It's not going to birth. It's not going to break the ground. It's not going to bring spring forth and break dirt overnight. No, it's going to take some time. But you keep nurturing it. You keep watering it. You keep doing what you need to do. You do your part. And your part is your call to operate in patience. So many are missing the mark. Bringing hardship and pain into a marriage. Bringing hardship and pain on the job. Why? Because they're irritated and, 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 and caught up in, in things that they don't know how to, let's just say, manage or control mainly because they haven't put patience in place. Patience has to be in place in order to bring about the greater, in order to bring about that which would be better. A lack of patience can and will poison a relationship. A lack of patience will and can poison or ruin a relationship. Why? Because, hey, people don't want to be around, let's just say, uh, uh, irritable people, you know, because when you don't have no patience, you're irritable, you're mad, you're uptight and you're short tempered and people are not attracted to that. People, hey, I got enough problems all by myself. I don't need to take on your stuff. I don't need to hang. Out. I don't really want to hang out with somebody that's dealing with a lot of issues. So we have to learn to incorporate patience and make it a lifestyle. See, you have to make it a lifestyle. And in order to do that now, you have to have a mindset where I realize every now and then I have to examine myself. By examining myself, I have to think about what I'm thinking about. Do I have to repeat that again? You have to think about what you're thinking about, mainly because of the mere fact that we understand and realize now that sometimes I'm thinking about things that are not good. I'm thinking about those things that are taking me, let's just say, uh, off point or out. it's allowing my vision to not be clear. I'm, it's out of focus and it's blurry. Why? Because I'm agitated and I'm, and I'm allowing myself to be stressed and pull apart. Matter of fact, the Bible says a house divided cannot stand. I'm not talking about you in a relationship with a spouse family member or someone like that. I'm talking about you, your individual self. You can't afford to be torn apart. You have to be on one accord with yourself first. Are you hearing me? Until you can be on one accord with yourself, until you can operate in patience, when you can understand the importance and the value of patience, it's going to help you make better choices and decisions over your life. You're not going to be so quick to, 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 to to speak out something that you, oh, I wish I can take it back. Why? Because you wasn't patient. You're short tempered. So now you find yourself doing things and saying things that can be is one thing to be uh, a reproach or or bringing about, uh, let's just say, discord in a relationship with others. But isn't it kind of messed up when you're not even able to be comfortable with yourself? And there's and we know a lot of people like that now. 
We know some folk like that. And we need to ask ourselves, is it something I can do that can make my make my life just a little bit better? Yes. Incorporate some patience there and, 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 and focus on making this happen. See, you got to want it bad enough. I want to I want to be patient. I want to be patient in all areas of my life. You should want to be patient in all areas of your life. So you have to do what? You have to pay attention to what's coming out of you. Now, I said earlier now, you have to not only pay attention to what's coming out of you, you have to also pay attention to what's in you. That's why I said think about what you're thinking about, because what you're thinking about will eventually come out of you. The Bible says, as a man think of in his heart, so is he. And paraphrase, so shall you become. So, you know, you, you want to think on those things that are good, those things that are of a good report. Why? Because that's what you want flowing out of you. And if patience isn't in you, you're going to find yourself in a struggle, in a fight, and you're going to wonder why. I just, every day is just messed up. If it wasn't for no bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Oh, I just don't know what to do with myself. I don't understand why I just can't make this happen. I don't understand why I can't make that happen. And it's mainly because you're not slowing down. I'm going to say it again. Sometimes we just need to slow down. See, if we can slow down and, and, and kind of like think about some things and take a stroll in the park, sit on a bench, uh, turn the television off, Cut the phone down, get away from your iPad, get away from your your computers and all of this stuff and and just think, just meditate, just find that 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 peace, that time where I can enter into some real peace, where I can allow myself to think and and to realize, man, I'm a little agitated. I need to work on me right now. I need to work on me right now. My brothers and sisters, it's so very important that you take the time out to work on you. Many of you out there, you've given so much to others, whether it's children, family members, friends. We've, we've given so much to others. You need to work on yourself, too. Don't overlook the fact that you need to work on you. And, and, and just like you are patient with others, let me say this. You have to also be patient with yourself. That's a key quality in making this happen. You have to be patient with yourself. Oh, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son. And when you think about the patience of God, Lord Jesus, when you think about how many times we didn't fail and had to get back up, how many times, my God, we made a promise and we didn't even keep it. Not to say I didn't want to keep it, but things went down. Stuff came up against me and I wasn't able to keep that promise. But I'm here to tell you today, if you can hold on to God's unchanging hands. Oh, God's got a plan and his plan is perfect for your life. Now, I know you might not be walking down a perfect pathway. You might not be on that road to greater. You might find yourself in some turmoil right now, some difficulty. You might be dealing with some stinking thinking, whatever the case may be. But I'm here to tell you today, if you can just incorporate some patience, a little more patience in your life, just a little more. Pursue patience, you know, pursue patience. You know, the Bible says those who diligently seek the Lord, he's a rewarder of them. I'm here to tell you today that when you can seek patience, when you can pursue patience, there's a great reward in patience because you're going to be able to see yourself different. Think about those of you who have learned how to have mastery over patience and not allow these different things to have mastery over you. Look at how others are taught. Man, you're not the same Man, you're not the same sister that you used to be. What's changed? Well, I've incorporated patience in my life. I'm using patience now the way God intended me to use it. I'm not opposing myself. So I need to ask myself today, my brothers and sisters today, ask yourself, what area of my life, your life, do I need to work on? And do I need to add a little more patience? Who's in my life that I need to have a little more patience with? And then, Lord, give me the tools and give me the wisdom. If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives liberally. God wants you to be a success. 
He wants you to be a winner and not a loser. He didn't save you for you to be left out in the cold on the outside looking in. He wants you on the inside. You're not here to be a spectator, but to be a participant. It's going to be hard to participate in this game called life if you're not operating or able to operate in patience. So when you understand the, that, that there's so many benefits that's going to spring forth from patience, you, you understand that patience will be demonstrated in how you deal with other people. So very important, my brothers and sisters. And we love you here at God's Got a Plan. And we just want to give you that type of information that's going to help grow you up, mature you, develop you, and help you to see that there is so much more to life than what you settled for. We're going to take it out now. And I pray that you receive something today that has encouraged, that has uh, giving you a mind that I can I can do this thing different. I don't have to stay irritable and short tempered. I can if I can incorporate a little more patience in my life, I can have mastery over that problem. Whatever your problem is, I want you to know you can have mastery over it. We love you. Father, I pray your blessing. May the Lord bless and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you. Be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and speak peace into your life, joy, love, excitement, and Lord God, even more patience. I pray that you would bless my brother, bless my sister, press down, shaken together, and overflowing, poor patience, love, joy, peace, and oh God, the virtues that will build a man, a woman up, and solidify them, make them whole every which way, in Jesus' name, amen. And amen. I want to thank those of you who are joining me on our prayer line uh, in the morning at eight o'clock in the morning. We have a CWM scripture meditation and prayer line. I want to thank you so much for joining us. And we're just having a, a great time there. And I mean, the Lord is bringing forth the word six days a week, Monday through Saturday at eight o'clock, 15, 20 minutes of your time. You know, while you're going to work, if you're home, if you're bedridden, whatever. And then we have a playback number that will also bless you. So if you can, you can look us up on YouTube at uh, uh, God's Got a Plan, Robert Golson. I'm on Facebook. And we just want you to just link up with us. If you're viewing us on YouTube, please like our channel and subscribe to the channel. And, I'm, and everything that's we, that I upload, you'll be the first to see it. And I'm, I'm here, hopefully, to be a blessing to you. I hope you've been blessed today. God bless you now. Come back and see us again. In Jesus' name, amen. Don't forget, patience is a virtue, a good thing. Bye-bye now. Yes, I believe.